that's what we'll say. That is true. Ryan, you said this was one of the scariest places you've ever been. What made it so horrible? Did you see it? <laughs> what? I did. But like, all the places we go are horrible. What stood out? I mean, just the... It's comically horrific. I mean, you, you all saw the, the, the peeling wallpaper, just the piles of clothes. <laughs> Whose clothes are those? Like, it's like a weird thing. There was actually something that didn't show in the episode. We're probably going to put it in debrief. But um, we walked into the morgue, and there was this briefcase on like the, on, like, the side of the wall. And Shane was kind of looking through it, and we could put it back. We walked to the end of the morgue, we came back, and then the briefcase was just sitting in the middle of the hallway. Oh. And I don't, there's just weird, unsettling things about this place, things that I'm Jill put down in the episode. I don't know why. That sounds, that sounds good. It's because of this guy, kind of, I, I realized it like in the late stages of the edit, and I was like, ah, shit. All right, well, debrief. But um, yeah, then there was also just, there's things there that shouldn't be there, like the safe. <laughs> There's a lot of garbage. It's a gross, weird place, uh, and it's it stunk, stank, stink. It smelled like shit. Yeah. <laughs> it was not good. How does it rank with all the like? You've been to a lot of weird, spooky hospitals. How does it rank among them? Oh, it's it's yeah, it's definitely the darkest. I think. Uh, we went to Waverly in the premiere, but Waverly was a happy place where thousands of people died. And, uh, <laughs> but they were largely like, you know, hey, we get to hang out with my other buddies who all have TV. You That's know? true. TV, <laughs> TV buds. Uh, this place, uh, just real sad and gross. Um, and, um, you know, it's fun, fun, fun. They also cleaned Waverly up, honestly. Like, when we came back, I was like, they did a nice job with this place. I don't think clean has ever happened. <laughs> I don't think a, a, a single can of Lysol has ever entered, entered, entered that fucking hospital. It was the grossest place I've ever been. Uh, I wish I could have... I'm worried that my lungs are fucked up now. <laughs> Shane, obviously, don't necessarily believe in ghosts, but you said this place gave you, like, bad vibes. Was that just the cleanliness, or did you feel... Yeah, you know. Yeah, what did you feel, Shane? It just looks like a place that someone in a David Fincher movie would like go to get some information from, like someone creepy. Uh, it just had, you know, there's vibes. There's vibes to places. I don't think they're ghost vibes. Don't worry. Uh, it's just a gross, gross old building. Would you say when you go to places like this that you're more in danger of ghosts or bats? Uh, bats? Uh, probably bats. Bats are known to be, you know, they, they have a capacity to carry rabies. Yeah, uh, what's going on with that? Why were you trying to, like, pet that bat? I, I, I do love bats. Uh, they're, they're wonderful. You ever look at one of those little faces? It's like a little furry pig. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's hear it for bats, <laughs> This is love bats. It's a strange inclination. Uh, you do you know, kind of look like a Batman villain right now. Thank so you, because it makes sense. Uh, growing up, we'd uh, camp in Wisconsin every now and then, yeah. and you'd go out at sunset, watch all the bats fly overhead. Uh, sometimes you'd get in the lake real late at night, and we'd put our, our, our eyes and our nose just above the water, and the bats would swoop over your head, catching all the bugs. This is things that children do. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's so, definitely not the most bad we've seen in a location either. I no, remember when we went to, no, when we went to to Yuma on a, on a show, no, yeah, unsolved or whatever. <laughs> uh, we were in this little cave. <laughs> it was like a phone booth, like the size of the, uh, the that cave, and there was fifty bats in there. It was a phone booth full of bats. <laughs> it was, it was top <laughs> yeah. Uh, Garrett got me all bat hyped too. I was like, like with the whole plane ride there, I was like, bats, 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 <laughs> yeah. bats. Then we got there and we got bumpkis. That's why you, you you saw that one bat and you were in there, you know, pitching a tent in the morgue. So. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Oh. okay. <laughs> How was <Next> question? <laughs> How was it working with Garrett? Oh great. Uh, we actually have a photo. Well, we don't. Have, I looked up. Yeah, I was right to say we're talking about you. Uh, <laughs> Garrett is, I think, one of the only other people we've worked with, uh, who's... Is he taller than me? I think he's... Is he he's taller? about 
you both are very mountainous. Yeah, uh, we, we, took, I, we took a I, photo I, I, the day that he came over of me and Garrett carrying Ryan like a baby. He's, they're both giant. <laughs> the thing is, he looks taller than you because he's whiter. He has more like, yeah, sort of I don't want to say he's more muscular, but he's no. just, he's a big man. Yeah, when they when they scaled him up in Photoshop, they pressed the option button. So he's yeah. like the correct, uh, whereas they just like... I would say even yeah. worse though, he's built like a Coke machine. You're built like a Swim Gym, so <laughs> yeah. like a, there's a huge difference. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's true. Well, mouse. So, yeah. it's like, very specific for those with the Photoshop crowd. <laughs> you're out uh, there. Let's hear for Photoshop. <laughs> you're abusing the power. You're abusing the power. No, no, no. You just no. can't get them to apply. No, DC loves Photoshop. So would you say? This, <laughs> yeah, okay. Would you say this is the creepiest place you've been to this season, or is there another that ranks among them? Oh, oh that's yeah. tough. That's honestly. Come it, on, tease us. Every single episode is creepy. Uh, <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. What are you trying to do? Yes, this is the creepiest episode of the season. Please I'm watch to get, the other three. I'm trying to uh, tease. Tease what else? It's, there are some other places. We, we do return to a place that we visited before and unsolved later in the season. Uh, I find that it's fun to revisit places that we've already been because before we, we kind of just walked around with a camera and was like, Hey! Look. Come get me, ghosts! Like that kind of thing, but now we have all the tech. <laughs> so, to be able to do a proper ghost investigation at a, at, a, at, a, at, the, at a place we've been before is something that I'm excited to show everybody. But honestly, it's pretty hard to top the creepiness of this place. That solo investigation, I, uh, I truly had to shut down a part of my brain. Yeah, I think it's safe to say most people in the audience have probably seen a couple of these solo investigations, and you you know, clearly look like you're going insane. What's actually happening? Yeah, thank you. And in, 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 this, in this episode, it appeared that you became Batman. That's so, right. <laughs> tell us about that mental I, state. I mean, I've also never seen Batman do a, a stomp like that. No. I mean, he doesn't show up to the Joker and go like... <laughs> and you know what? That's probably why they chose Robert Pattinson over me. I did that in my audition. That was in your audition. And, uh, you know, you make a choice and you stick with it. I, um... I don't know, where do I go? I somewhere dark. <laughs> Honestly, sometimes I do have to become crazy to distract myself. My theory is that if I am crazy, they won't they won't hurt me. Maybe they'll be like, that guy's crazier than me, I'm not gonna fuck with him. I just saw him fart his way up a staircase and pretend that he was Batman. The last thing I want to do is tango with that guy. And uh, also yeah, it, if I don't, there's a possibility that I will have a mental breakdown. I, uh, and this is one of those places where I really had to like hone in because the place was horrifying. Because like you know, as we're doing the episodes and we're you know we're we're filming most of the time, we have myself, Shane, and we have our, our little crew. It's not a big crew, but there's still more than just myself. And I'm always kind of just taking snapshots of like the place in my mind, like that place is going to suck alone. That place is going to suck alone. I'm not coming here. And I used to be able to get away with that, but now, because Shane has that stupid walkie-talkie, he can force me to go wherever he wants. Um, so now I am forced to go. It's fun. The entire time yeah, we were on Unsolved, I was like, we gotta get walkies, it would be so fun to talk to each other while we're doing this. And we've had the time of our lives this season. <laughs> You're making it sound like boyish fun. That's not <laughs> I'm going into the notes quarters looking at tidy whities that are dirty on the floor by my feet. That's not fun for me. Well, you know, it's an acquired taste. Dirty, dirty, tidy whities. Yeah, I was about to say, taste, maybe not the best usage of words there. That's like me saying I was gonna, I want to hear someone slamming wood. Brian cackled at that line backstage. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a better way to say someone slammed the door. Don't ask someone to slam their wood. <laughs> But so much of this show is torture of your own invention. That's true, I have no one to blame but myself. <laughs> right. So, when you talk about no one to blame but yourself, how did Ghost Files come to be? Yeah, you know, it was one of those things when we were shooting Unsolved, uh, I, I kind of always had in the back of my mind, this is coming to an end, I've had a lot of ideas of how we could do this a little bit better if we ever get the chance to do it again. So we made Watcher, and it was always just kind of stewing in the background, and luckily, you guys all watched Watcher enough for us to be like, you know what, let's take a shot here. And then, um, finally was able to enact all the little plans that I had. I actually think I wrote Ghost Files, like the first part of it, 
very, very cliche, on a napkin on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the napkin, I just threw it away. <laughs> <laughs> it's not framed at the watcher office. It's not framed at the watcher office, it's not that important. Um, but yeah, yeah. That, that's the extent of it. He showed up at the office, put the napkin on the wall and said, let's shoot. <laughs> you know, let's build. <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, it is funny because I do kind of approach figuring out ways to torture myself with this kind of glee. Like, I, I, the, the solo investigation, wouldn't it be funny if I had to find a walkie-talkie and the only time that my time started is once I find it in a radio bag? That would be hilarious, right? And everyone in the room was like, yes, that would be very funny. Not knowing that I set myself up for that. I go up to the set and I'm like, fuck, I gotta find this walkie now. I hope Shane didn't put it somewhere off. Well, of course he always does, because look at him. <laughs> I do my job not yeah. sitting I gotta push you out. Push her. I push you. Yeah. It is what it is. <laughs> Look, we have controversial methods, but sometimes uh, you gotta do what you gotta do to find some guys. I don't know if you guys saw the Collider article out yesterday called us the greatest ghost hunters in the world. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, 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 now I'm finally gonna tell my my barber that I'm a ghost hunter. Every time they every time they ask me, I'm like, well, I'm in video because I don't want to tell them that I. Because then they're always like, I saw my aunt. Uh, and she's been dead for a long time. And I'm like, just cut my hair. <laughs> but you are Shane. You're a professional ghost hunter. That's right. You're, you're goddamn right. I am. <laughs> One of the other things. <laughs> Ghost Files, the uh, audience evidence, the audience right. submitted evidence. What do you? What was in your mind when you were like, we need this, we need to add this element? Well, the thing about Unsolved was like, we, uh, we, I don't feel like we relied on evidence for people to watch the show. We kind of relied on the history and us <laughs> digging around a little bit. So I just thought, wouldn't it be great if we could have an episode of each of these, uh, of the show and have evidence in every single episode? What's the best way to do that? And I just realized we have basically an audience full of investigators themselves. <laughs> Why don't we just let them be in the show? And that way, it could be like the internet hunting ghosts as one. And uh, every episode would have amazing evidence. And thank God that I put out the call and uh, everybody sent in crazy evidence. And that's amazing. That's like all thanks to you guys. So give yourself an applause for that. <laughs> Look, not all the evidence is gems. I'm gonna say it for you, Shane. I didn't say anything. You didn't have to. I felt your gaze on the back of my head. We, we trust that the people submit the evidence are not charlatans. Uh, I've said, hey, look, I've said this before in Beaver. We don't have to get into this right now. But I just find it funny that whenever skeptics want evidence. The burden of proof is not on me, by You friend. want evidence, and then you send in the evidence. And it's too good. The first thing you see is it's fake. So I don't understand. I don't... I'd love to see the Slimer. <laughs> Give me a full Slimer, and then we'll talk. <laughs> you gotta stop talking. I want to. I want to. Like he always like a, a whisper. I want to. I want to be uh, getting a, a ticket at a, a movie theater, and uh, I want the ticket ticket to just turn into a Slimer. That's what it'll take. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking? About? <laughs> And you may stop telling the people to slime you. <laughs> slime me! Please! Please no. uh, one of the other new things, you have lots of new tools. Tell That's right. Tell us a little bit about your new tools. Which one's your favorite? I was going to say other than Shane, but... Right. <laughs> it's just this low-hanging fruit. I said you have the It's low-hanging fruit, and I still, I still, bought, I still bit it. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah. uh, my favorite one is probably... It, it's either the, the Estes method, just because I find like it's a, it's a very compelling way to get responses. Um, but sometimes that Oculus really cracks me up. Uh, that nerd moment, one of the greatest moments of my entire life. Because you don't see all the stuff that goes in between, like we cut it down. There's a lot of time where we're just talking and nothing's happening. Uh, so when we got angry and told them to say our names, and just nerd. <laughs> It's just true joy. I also want to mention there's uh, in that nerd room, the, that's right, the bathroom. Um, uh, we walked into there and there was this uh, pile of uh, what appeared to be like ectoplasmic goo. And Ryan and I stared at it for a solid five to ten minutes and we were like, wow, nerd. 
earth where you're crouched and you're yeah, like, should I poke it with a stick? I smelled it and I was like, should you sniff it? What does yeah. it smell like? We Actually, sure. one of our editors sped up that audio and it sounded like two mice looking at like a stick of cheese. And then when we reviewed the edit, we eventually realized this on the scene, but it's a beautiful scene because we're both crashed so intently trying to figure it out. And directly above us, you just see a soap dispenser. <laughs> We'll release the, uh, <laughs> the world's greatest detectives. <laughs> <laughs> we figured it out eventually. I was like, so that's kind of so did you think that'll probably have to be a deep read? Uh, <laughs> God, this is the dumbest thing that's ever happened. <laughs> it felt like you were really talking to Rose for a second there. How'd you feel? Yeah, we got her. That was actually... Oh, wait, it happens one more time at the end of the season. I won't say when. But for the most part, we've turned on that SLS camera and got bubbles. There's nothing. And so to finally see someone appear next to the TV, also with their arms kind of flailing around near that light, that was really cool. And it appeared next to Lizzie, which gave her a nice little heart attack. It was funny. I liked her little hop that she did when she started her buddy home. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know what the theory behind that was. Maybe she thought if I lock all my joints together, maybe the ghost will see me hopping away. But uh, no, that SLS scene was was thrilling, and uh, I love how we just basically had a non-sponsored Coors ad in the middle of the episode. But uh, that that was actually uh, that was really really cool. I, I've not seen that before. And the REM pod and the nurses' uh, quarters that really threw you for a loop. Uh, yeah, that was not great. Uh, no, I, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of times we just put things in places and we figure nothing's going to happen. So when I put the REM pod in that nun's quarters, because there's a bunch of rooms up there, I just figured, yeah, this, well, hope I don't forget this later, essentially. And then so when we heard it going off, not great. <laughs> not, not great. We didn't bust out the teddy bear in this episode, though, did we? Yeah, there was no kid ghosts here. I feel like it's kind of weird to put, like, a... A little I teddy bear saying, well, you want to be my friend? Well, like, she she might catch the adults. adults. Well, adults might be like, well, what's this here? What's this for me? <laughs> oh, I guess, no, I guess you might not be right. Yeah, I suppose. I just want to bring the teddy bear. I think it's funny to watch you take that through customs or... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want them to look at your back and be like, what's going on here? Don't you touch my bear. <laughs> <laughs> don't you touch my bear. Or my little backpack. backpack. That's a ghost trap. <laughs> so, you have a cute little backpack. <laughs> So speaking of going through customs, what's it like traveling on the road? It doesn't look weird. glamorous. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> yeah, I usually get stopped by TSA and I have to open my ghost crates and show all my gadgets. And they're like, what's this for? Catching ghosts. <laughs> Do we have a problem or can on the flight? Like a ghost package. <laughs> the, the case legitimately says ghost gear on it. It does say it, so I don't even know why they're asking me that. It's really <laughs> Uh, it is, it's fun traveling for, I, we've, uh, when we were with BuzzFeed, people would always be like, oh, I've always wanted to, like, people elsewhere in the company were like, I've heard the Unsolved travel shoots are so fun, you guys are supposed to be the partiers. Uh, and that's true, but it's very wholesome, but it's largely because we can't shoot until sundown, uh, so we usually get to a town, and we're like, yeah, we get a nice little brunch or something, uh, and we hang out, and Go shoot at sundown and shoot till 3 or 4 a.m. That's right. Wake up. We're asleep. We're all little sleepy heads. Uh, I think there's also something very, it builds camaraderie, I think, to enter into a, you know, a horrifying shithole. <laughs> yeah. It's tiring. You definitely de uh, develop kind of like a trench mentality of just <laughs> being covered in dirt and cobwebs. And then you go back to the hotel room. Have a couple beers and play card games or something. <laughs> I know. Uh, this one was fun too because we uh, had a, a, a new guy on the crew, Kevin Bazell, who's this like oh, this great, the, uh, the British <laughs> sound <guy>. English dad, <laughs> and uh, he was like, "Ah, oh, it's cool, man. It's cool. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this place." And he's like, "Yeah, I love this game, man. I love it." And he was like taking a photo of himself outside the haunted place for his kids. He <laughs> loved it. Yeah, I love that that was his first ghost file shoot. And I, 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 I immediately proceeded to just <laughs> shit my pants in his ear. <laughs> Sorry about it. And look, I only did that because he wouldn't shut up. He, he always does that like, oh man, it's time. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not joking around. I really saw something up there. I just got tired of it. And I was like, you know what? 
gonna cut you off the best way I know. She didn't have hints on camera. Yeah, they, uh, that happened at probably 3 a.m. when we're pretty, you know, that's, there's an element, you know, we always go into these places and try to have fun and we're goofy, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But as you get closer to uh, dawn, you know, you're, you get crazier. And uh, Ryan did that. And we continued shooting. And then the next day I was like, uh, you know, we didn't really get another take of that. So you're just going to have to put that in the episode. <laughs> I hope you're comfortable with that. I wish you could have seen my face backstage. Because I was just waiting with like, well, about to shit my pants in front of all these people. <laughs> hope they enjoy it. <laughs> That's the weirdest thing to anticipate. Normally shit in your pants. I'll, I'll move on from it for just a second. I think that's good. <laughs> Sorry, I need to be clear. Brian, you're trying to shoot. I didn't shake my hand. This sure sounded like it. You're saying it with such confidence. I can picture everybody knows you're trying to shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was no poop running down my legs. So that was one of the recommendations. I'm just saying that normally when you, you exert such a, a forceful fart like that, it's very embarrassing and it happens kind of like, ah, oh, damn, I didn't think that was going to slip out. Kind of thing. And knowing it's going to happen and knowing all of you are gonna hear that. It's a weird experience. And uh, I kinda liked it, actually. Our editors, can you won't move on after this, but our editors did send us the clip of that, and now it's like, so we were like, switch it to Ryan's face cam. We want to see what his face looks like when that happens. Yeah, that's right, because they used to have it in the wide shot, because she wanted to see my lifeless eyes. <laughs> it's like, I'm so, it was so late, I was so tired, I did not want to go on the solo, and I was like, please, just shut up. You know what? Here you go, take this. <laughs> anyway, we'll move on. Yeah. I will say, as, as, as a person who's been on these shoots and has been in a position of opposition to Ryan, you really do, in those late moments, fight everything that you set up. Ryan has approached me so many times before solos and said, hey, we really don't have to do this. <laughs> and I'm like, but we do. We talked about this. We agreed. And he's like, yeah, but I changed my mind. And just don't, I, just I don't think, I, you know, I don't think, and it goes through all the stages of bargaining. Like, we don't, I just don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's going to be interesting. I don't think people think it's fun. I do beg and plead, like, yes. one of the, the people that leave decent catches and take it. Just like, you don't have to do this, please. I have a family. I know this is my show, but we're, we don't need to catch anything on these solos. I, why do I need to do this, huh? Shane went, waka waka. <laughs> And then I pull Shane aside and say, you have to make him do this. You bully him into doing yeah. it. Yeah. I, I bribed Mark. I bribed Mark in this one. Off camera, I was like, Mark, you can't be bought. I told you, I'll, I'll give you $20. He so. can be bought by a sexy ghost. <laughs> I <didn't want> that. <laughs> that was weird, right? Yeah. <laughs> what, did Mark react? He reacted how Mark reacts, which is, oh. <laughs> Mark, our ever stoic director. He's a very stoic character. man, but there's a, a strength in that silence. So one thing I do have to ask about before we move on from talking about the episode, the dummy. That's right. First, Shane, why do you always find the creepiest thing <laughs> in this place you. and you touch it? But you have nothing to do weird things with the dolls and you still did it. Well, I had a ventriloquist doll when I was a little boy. That's oh. weird. <laughs> I've never seen, that never made more sense. Everything makes sense now, actually. You're fun to have. You should buy them for your children. <laughs> Just make them very well adjusted. <laughs> Look at me. I'm a ghost hunter and puppet man. You tell me if you weren't walking down the hall, if you were doing your solo first, you didn't see that little funny fella in there. You I think I could say hey, every single person in this theater and I can ask if you saw that ventriloquist dummy in the dark lit by a flashlight beam, <laughs> would you go towards it? The answer would be unequivocally no. <laughs> Wait, raise your hand if you know. No, 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 let's do a round of applause. <laughs> this is the Apollo. No, that's a, okay, round of applause if you would go say hello to the little dummy. <laughs> <laughs> People. My warriors in the war against the ghosts! <laughs> they say that now in those comfy little seats when they get out there. Once you see that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have people from the other side. Oh, oh yeah, who wouldn't? Now, see, what you heard right there, Shannon, it's called Sir 
survival instinct. <laughs> I, I have no doubt that if you lived in prehistoric times, you'd be eaten by a jaguar. Within like five minutes, because you'd be trying to check out how many spots are I, 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 I did catch COVID from the dummy. That's not true. Magic, magic. I got COVID after that. <laughs> not from the dummy. No, uh, that, that, uh, that dummy sequence. What was going on with that movie? That was something that our editor pointed out to me because I didn't even notice that. He said, you know, Shane just dropped the head. Oh, you want like my, my little uh, insufferable explanation? I didn't want to um, The head was kind of like you can see there. There was a hook inside. There's a little hook, and I think I did place it on in a way that like probably when you picked it back up, the hook was hooked back on. But hey, how much you guys believe it? <laughs> Your explanation is that the head hook just kind of hooked itself. That's what, hook, a hook hooked? <laughs> oh, no, that's, no, you can't just, a hook won't just hook itself. A hook hooks? That's what hooks do? They need they, 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 they they a hooker to hook the hook. Oh. I was the hooker. <laughs> this is what you guys signed up for. <laughs> uh, and with that, actually, we are going to move into some audience questions. So I believe we have two microphones set up in the midpoints in either of these no, aisles. No. Now, if, with anybody who has a question, please, with the utmost Whoa. patience and the utmost calm, feel free to this slowly, 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 slowly see all of you. This is important. I love you, love Washington, D.C. so much. Oh my God. Do make your way, and, and wow. we, we have time. We're going to answer some questions. We're obviously not going to get to all of these, but that's true. We might not get to all of them. Well, there are the people here in the evening. Don't threaten them. Six and fraternities! <laughs> Watch your back up there! Wrong theater. Uh, just, just a quick reference that yes, we unlikely will be able to answer all questions, but we're going to try to get through as many yeah. as we can. So when you step up to the mic, tell us your name, question, and then we will do our best to answer. Uh, in the meantime, while everybody lines up, I'm going to let you know that I know it's probably pretty disappointing we did not uh, have any merch for sale tonight, but we do have a special coupon for our live shows. So I just wanted to tell you that our coupon is Boo Goo 15. <laughs> yes, that's what it is. That's right. Very memorable, but that's for you guys. So anybody who is interested in buying merch, you will get a discount if you want to go to watch the store. That's right. Pretty cool. So, okay. With that, we'll take questions. So here on the left, hi, what is your name? Tell us what your question is. Sorry, I can't tell if I'm left. I just realized it came out of my mouth. My left, your... Right. Well, we're already there, here, so you gesturing know. towards Wait. you. Um, hi, my name is M. Um, hey, M. Hi. Uh, my question was, uh, you used a Ouija board um, on the Go Man episode. That's right. Were you ever planning to use one again? You know... <laughs> <laughs> we could. <laughs> nothing really happened, and I feel like every time you use that thing, you're kind of asking for trouble. Granted, nothing happened on that bridge because that guy sucks and it's our bridge. <laughs> 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 Uh, you know, I'm not gonna rule it out. Honestly, you know what's crazy? Most locations, they'll, they'll say, do whatever you want here, but in writing, no Ouija boards. <laughs> A lot Speaking of locations have very, very strict policies about Ouija boards, weirdly. They let me get on top of stairs, put cat ears on, and dance around, but no Ouija boards. <laughs> they draw the line at the Ouija boards. Also, between, like, anytime we've used a Ouija board, that would look. Nothing can happen. <laughs> ever, ever. That's true, nothing has happened. And I always am, look, I'm not a skeptic, but sometimes I'll see YouTube videos of people doing their own Ouija board sessions, and they're always like, Whoa! <laughs> We got a toddler in here! And I'm always like, The devil's taking me for a ride! <laughs> a Monte Cuba. I don't know, it's really... I, they're, they're, they're giving us a bad name when they do that, I feel like, sometimes. Or, you know what, maybe it's, but... I don't know. I'm scared of a Ouija board. That's all you, I'm gonna say. You know what kind of lawsuits Hasbro would be opening themselves up to if <laughs> they were selling a toy that you could, you could, you could contact the devil with. <laughs> That's true. We do have to move. Thank you, Em. Right. Thank what? you, Em. Um. Would, you, would you like your own that I made for you? Oh, yes. oh my god. 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 No offense, I'm gonna light that on fire. You guys have this. <laughs> and I'll make sure it doesn't get lit on fire. What if this one's like really good tonight or like? Oh, yes. Guys, it's really good. 
really good. You're not like this on fire. It's really cute. It's custom. Thank this you. is a custom Thank you, Ed. devil thing. <laughs> That's crazy. Thank you for Here this. on the right. Hi, tell us your name. That's Hello. Your question. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, my name's Jen. Um, I don't have a present for you, but you That's did put That's my, okay. You put my art in your uh, Houdini episode, so thank you very much. Oh. Hey, <laughs> so uh, my question is one I've been curious about for a while. So your beliefs are widely known. Uh, your That's individual right. beliefs are That's widely right. known. Has there, can you remember a moment, or has there been a moment where, Shane, you were like, wow, I kind of believing, I really believe in ghosts right now, and Brian, where you've been like, this is bullshit, this is bullshit. <laughs> uh, you want to answer that one, big guy? Um, never on Unsolved, but also never on Ghost <laughs> Ever use it. And no disrespect, it's a good question. Someone's always like, "You got, there's got to be something." At one point, and I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Uh, right? I'm always look. I've done this with him a million times. Like always, like that spring in the nuns' quarters. How about that? That's pretty unexplainable. That's good. That's a good one. That's that's what is responsible. You can't really argue with. Yeah, that's good. That's like, like, it's Jesus. <laughs> And no, there's not really... Look, I'm actually a little bit more discerning when it comes to being a believer. I don't like just putting out anything that um, is, is that can be debunked. That's for our own investigations, but also for other people's. I'll ask them questions about, like, can you send me the other audio files? Uh, who else was there? you have any other witnesses? Things like that. Uh, but there's never really been any point where I ever wavered in my belief. There's been too many things that have happened. Even in this season alone, there's been too many things that have happened, so... I think that's that's kind of the ghost files difference is that you're a believer, but no, no okay, hang on, Kate. <laughs> I'm just so serious. Oh, I'm just so serious. I'm just yeah. the dropping of your your catchphrases. Yeah. That's a ghost files difference. Uh, you're a believer, but you are pretty discerning. That's right. You're happy to see, hear stuff. And you're like, no. Uh, and I'm a skeptic. And yet, and I know this is gonna sound like. Baloney, but I believe I may be one of the least insufferable skeptics uh, in the field. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Because yeah. I have fun with it, you know? I'm having a good time out there. It's all well, that's not saying that you're not insufferable, it's just that you're the least, the least insufferable. I think that's the opposite word. If they're at level 100, I'm at 98. That's fair. <laughs> that's enough. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us your name and what's your question. Hello, uh, I'm Tyler. My question is kind of a hard question, I guess, to ask, but. What would you say was the scariest feeling you've ever had during an investigation? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, oh man, it's, it's gotta be either the Waverly investigation when I walked out of that door. <laughs> I really, really did not want to do it. I considered like, maybe we just don't do this again. Maybe we just, maybe we just quit the whole series. I can't do this. Uh, I, I thought I was gonna cry, to be honest. Uh, that or Old City Jail? Old City Jail, probably. I don't think I've ever been the same since I went there. To be honest, <laughs> yes, you did curse us all out. Yeah, I was a. Uh, I was out of my mind in there. It's probably one of those two, or this place, honestly. Um, yeah, it's just this feeling of. Uh, I'm in this place alone. It's really big. It's really dark. If something happens to me, they're not going to find me for a very long time. <laughs> and just knowing that, because my phone's on silent, they're not going to hear it. What's going to happen? I can have a heart attack. Like, I, all these things start to spin around in my mind. It's weird that those things, and, and within all that tornado, oh, I might see a, an undead person as well. Uh, that's like, it's just, it's, 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 I can't really describe it, but it's it's all that just avalanching on you at the same time. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I would I would hope that over time I'd, I'd be more hardened. But uh, and uh, and Shane, I, I don't know if this one applies to be honest. <laughs> uh, they're all great. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean the one that was are also very scary. Um, this one, this one was spooky. This was you know even a seasoned pros like us and we are professionals. Uh, uh, you still every now and then you show up to a place where you're like. 
oh, this is a new brand of, of terrifying in some way. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah, it was also a dead pigeon. I think it's very sad. I love birds, so don't love to see a pigeon with them. Uh, you know, sunken, rotting oh, eyes. Right. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, what's your name and your question? Hi, I'm Darcy. Hi, Darcy. Um, hey, Darcy. My question is, if you guys could actually investigate a fictional haunted place, which one would you pick? Holy shit, that's a really good one. <laughs> the Upside Down. Honestly, <laughs> that. Or, the, the Michael Myers house. I think I would want it. Yeah, those would both be really scary. The Upside Down, probably a little bit more because they got like demon dogs and shit running around there. They can like, you know, bite my head off, but uh, yeah, probably one of those. The Upside Down, though, it's like, that's, what are you gonna find there? It's all there. It's all sort of out you. You don't have to take out your EMF. You just get it. Oh, that's gonna show up. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> Imagine if there were ghost hunters in that series, they're just walking around, oh, we're gonna investigate that, it's like, ah! Yeah. Um, I, I would go to, uh, I'm a big fan of the, I was at 1995's uh, Casper, I'd go to Whipstaff. Yeah. 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 Those ghosts, like, the, the funny under ghosts, uh, Stinky and Wizzy and Pop, or whatever their names are. Oh, and same note, too, the, the, uh, the witch's house from uh, Hocus Pocus. Yeah. Yeah. All these places would be fun. I think Michael Myers would be most connected to our reality because if you investigate a Hocus Pocus house, you're gonna, you're gonna see a witch flying in a room and be like, oh shit. We're <laughs> <laughs> benched. You know, I, like, well, I don't know, but they suck with those souls on or they make us old, oh, like raisins. Is that right? Sorry, it's a great Sorry, it's been a while since I've watched it. What's your name? What's your question? Hi, I'm Mango, and um, what is oh, the I'm weirdest Mango. object you found at a location? <laughs> Um, oh man. Weird, it's not roses. I'm thinking about that, yeah. Uh, honestly, I wish I could show that briefcase, because that briefcase was super strange. I think that Fallen Safe is up there as well. This place, it was like a map that exploded inside there. <laughs> the horrific variety. Um, oh man. What is the weirdest thing we've done? That's a really good question. Other than that pile of soap. The first, this is a throwback, but the first thing that comes to mind, uh, I'm sure there was weird stuff this season on Ghost Files, but I always loved that um, moldy, sopping Mickey on the island of the Dogs. Oh, yeah! Oh. I touched, yeah, I touched him. <laughs> Great question. Yeah. What happened to the Dogs? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we do. Grats to the yeah. security. <laughs> oh. Hi, what's your name? What's your question? Hi, I'm Grace. Um, my question is, so obviously you guys have Buzz, um, Unsolved, and then you have Ghost Files, and as you know, Taylor Swift has her original albums, <laughs> and Taylor's yeah. version. That's right. So, this is kind of a two-in-one. Um, first, what's your favorite Taylor Swift album? <laughs> <laughs> what was, like, the process, and what did it feel like to be able to, like, elevate the series that like, meant so much to everyone, and like, make it better. Oh man. Well, my favorite album, oh, God, now it's escaping me. <laughs> Don't come after me, take the Swifties. But uh, it's not the one, not ever, it's not ever worth one before that. Cold <laughs> Cold Lord. <laughs> I love that album. Right now. Uh, like, I remember, <laughs> I remember right after it came out, you were like, man, I got high as hell the other night. This <laughs> Mari and I, my wife, and I, we, we, we laid in the dark to just to try to all other sensory deprivation. We, we put ourselves basically in like the sensory deprivation tank that Eleven puts herself in. Uh, and then we just listened to that album, and we may or may not have been under the influence. And, uh, and Ryan told us this in a business meeting. <laughs> Over Zoom and the depth of the pandemic. Look, you had to get through the pandemic some way, and if you have to put yourself in a bathtub full of salt, and turn all the lights off and listen to folklore, it's what you got The second part of the question, uh, could you repeat that? I got lost in the weeds. <laughs> um, so, how did it feel to have the opportunity to elevate ah. the previous series? No, that was, honestly, it, it, it felt, uh, I just felt kind of like an overwhelming sense of gratitude. Uh, to be honest, I didn't think we'd get another shot at doing this. Um, I felt very happy with how we closed out Unsolved, and I thought we delivered what we could in terms of the best way to say goodbye to everybody. 
But then when this came up, and as watchers started to get more and more successful, the possibility of this happening got, uh, you know, it became more and more real. And so as that happened, and we kept, you know, working towards it and towards it, uh, just just this feeling of gratitude that we had another opportunity. So uh, thank you guys for the opportunity. <laughs> And my question is, will you ever work with a medium again? <laughs> I, I, I really, uh, I, I want to hear Shane's response. <laughs> I mean, that Ryan wants to. <laughs> that medium was insane. He told me things that my grandpa told me when he before he died. Uh, I'm serious. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it was weird, too, because when he told me, I wasn't sure if he was still tapped into my grandpa. So, like... I was like talking, I was like, Grandpa? <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm talking to Grandpa. Grand. I was like, oh. But he was just like, I was like, Grandpa? And he, it's just weird to say Grandpa in a very serious tone to a guy who was nothing from Grandpa. <laughs> Grandpa was a uh, Yeah, you know, there's a fun element to the show. I'm not against it. I think they just Google stuff, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> what if he told you crazy things that you couldn't explain? I'd love to hear this. I'd love to hear this. <laughs> what about that Hollywood medium boy? I've never heard. met him, but I, I bring him along. He seems like a funny little guy. He's only a medium to celebs, from what I use the, the medium of Hollywood. Right? Well, according to Collider, we're the dumbest. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of plays into something that I've always wanted to do. I don't know if we'll ever do it, but maybe like a special episode of Ghost Files. It would be really fun to go into a haunted location and do no research, do nothing about it. Just do the investigation and see if things match up later. Ooh. But uh, that would be something that maybe we'll do for a special. We'll see. Um, yeah. Hi, what's your name? Hi there, my name's Alexandra, and I have kind of a two-part question here. Uh, actually, one. Yeah, two parts. Um, <laughs> one, do you think you Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Thank you so much. That's like basically uh, what I did when I was growing up and uh, when it came to like making things and you know, no matter how old you're, middle school, high school, college, the only thing you can do really is create um, because a lot of what you know creating is, is making mistakes and not getting it right. And if you just kind of just try and plan things out in your head and try and form it to a place where it's perfect, you're never going to make anything. Uh, so the best thing you can do is just make things and learn from that and then continue to make things after that and after that and after that and keep iterating and eventually you'll kind of find your stride and I find that when you go through that process you'll find your voice too, which is something that you don't really have if you haven't started yet. Um, you, your voice basically is just something in your head that you've seen from other creators, so um, just get out there and start doing it. And uh, furthermore, I think hone in on what you're passionate about. Uh, a lot of times there's ideas I think that we've come up with, that's weird, uh, there's so many ideas where you're like, ah, oh, this is just my dumb little thing that I'm interested in. Th that's what's interesting. Uh, yeah, you know, interesting. Follow, follow your dumb little things uh, and uh, take a real deep dive on them. No, uh, I, I think that's pretty accurate because like any sort of media or any sort of creative endeavor really comes down to point of view and what is your unique take on any subject matter. Like, no one else in the world can do that besides you, so just find whatever your unique perspective is and just lean into it because you kind of are the secret sauce in that sense. And it looks like you're off to a good start because these look incredible. 100%.
And this professionally found? <laughs> and just to add to what they said, just if you haven't, take a Watch the first episode of Unsolved that was ever made, and then watch the most recent episode of Ghost Files. And it it's should, a journey. It's a journey, and it'll make you feel... Well, it goes. Like, <laughs> you watch that first episode of But Unsolved. it makes you realize that like, you, you take risks, you put something out yeah. there, and you give yourself the chance to evolve, you give yourself the chance to grow, and find people who make you better. And don't be afraid of their opinions, because it will make you better. Oh, and one other thing. Uh, every time you do like a new little creative project, try and do something you haven't done on the ones previous. Learn something new in your little toolkit. Yeah, always done that. It's fun. Tell our editors you said that. Yeah. Like, like mm -hmm. killing the host of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fun one. Thank you so that. much. Because I find that when it comes to ghost hunting, a lot of it comes down to being able to have like a shared language with each other and knowing what to do and what not to do and having a closed off set. Because like when things happen with ghost files, like if there's a noise in the house, for instance, the first thing I'll do is I'll say, okay, did anybody do that in our crew? And I'll, unless they say no, um, I won't move forward with it. Uh, because I don't want to even pursue something that I know could be debunked, and if it's not, I'm, I guess I'm a pretty uh, untrustworthy guy because we've been traveling together as a group for like over six years now, and it's kind of tough to uh, challenge that you know uh, rapport out of the field. But you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, say that that will never happen. It's just something that we would have to do some uh, some practice or vetting beforehand. It's not that I don't trust Sam. No, I'm not starting a ghost hunting turf. No, we're, all, we're all brethren in the field. Uh, uh, is, is Curly the only person we've had? Um, right, Curly. Curly, yes. Yeah. He's, a, he's a very clean man. We yeah. Yeah. And we've got pretty good rapport with him. We love that man. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, no, but it's not something. We'd roll it out. Yeah, collaboration is never really a bad thing. It's something that we could, it could explore maybe in the future. Yeah. Thank but you. Uh, I, I will say, if we ever do that, you know, we'll probably sit up down and be like, look, here's how it's done. <laughs> Respectful, we'll have a slideshow. Ghost yeah. hunting 101. <laughs> thank you, hi. Hello, my name is Annika, and first of all, I would like to thank you guys, because I am here tonight with my boyfriend, and the entire reason we started talking was because we found a shared interest for you guys. Aww. So, congrats. You can imagine the shared <laughs> Second of all, here's the actual question. If you were to have a drink with any of the ghosts or demons from your adventures, who would you choose? I mean, the one that comes to mind is, honestly, this person needs a drink. Uh, Steve the Goat Man. He's going to get on that. He's got to nurse that L. He's got to nurse that L. Nurse that L. Uh, yeah, probably him or. Uh, but we do meet someone, Annabelle the doll. <laughs> Annabelle, <laughs> give her a little tiny team. Yeah, that's right. Just because I want to see her team. The shots are already small, but a tinier shot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what is so funny. I know, right? How do we even, how do we even get like a dropper? Just like a water dropper? Just get <laughs> Annabelle fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> She's using her little glass. Get all the glass. Yeah, that's right. Get, get all the tea on the other haunted dolls. Like, <laughs> who's <laughs> actually the spirit? Uh, yeah, those two come to mind. If we're talking about a ghost, um, Timmy, when he's of age. <laughs> he's, he's like five! I don't know how aging works in the ghost You've world. talked about that. Are they staying five, or is he... I'm pretty sure they're staying. He's staying well, I guess I don't know. Let's not go down there, but... <laughs> thank you so much! Thank you. I also sent you guys some fan art a couple of months ago. I don't know. Oh, thank, we probably got it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Much, okay. Thank you. Well, for, thank you so much. Yes. Tell your boyfriend I thought I said hi. Oh, is he here? Oh, he's right there. <laughs> I don't know. Wow, you stood so formally. I thought you were an usher here or something. <laughs> <laughs> that was crazy. Um, what's like your favorite 
favorite place that you've been to um, historically, non-paranormal way? Ooh, favorite place we've been to historically that's non-paranormal way. Oh man, that's a good question. Um, that's pretty much all the places. Yeah, right? I know. I, every place I go to, unfortunately, at this point, is to, to search for dead people. Um, let me think. Let me think about that. Probably because it's connected to my heritage, because I'm a half Japanese. I went to Pearl Harbor. That was very sad. But it was like a good historic site. My grandma walked around. She cried. She was like, this is. This is a bummer. And then I went to the gift shop. Uh, so, that was a fun time with my grandma. Oh, okay. She's dead. I wasn't looking forward to the rap. She's on the rap. She's here. She's on the rap. 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 I'm not a very well traveled man. You literally have a show about history. You know, but I haven't been to a lot of places. Uh, I, you know, one thing I've enjoyed is driving between Chicago and California. That's a fun drive. I think that's worth. I know that's kind of a weird answer, but uh, it's fun to do because I've never. Hey, what's the most exciting site you've been to? My car. Hey, uh, <laughs> you've been to McDonald's. Two thousand one Ford Torts. <laughs> but Ford exploded. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but uh, it's fun. It's fun. You, you can do like the historic route, Route 66, it's very similar to the motion picture cars. Uh, <laughs> it's very pleasing. But I didn't realize like how huge uh, sort of the western ass of the country is, west of the Mississippi. It's so big, like the left cheek. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. It's all oh, with the Mississippi that. nations. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Hi, what's your name? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My question is going to go back to Waverly because it's the only time in the deleted scenes and stuff that we've actually, I think, changed seen you scared. So I want to know why did you run? I called out. A little frog went and work. You did a little. Sleep 
back in the day, and, uh, yeah, and the uh, the staff there gave us an off the books tour, and we yeah. did a little uh, impromptu ghost hunting there. But other than that, we were up till like three or four a.m. with the staff. They came out, and they were like, "You guys want some shots?" <laughs> he drove home and brought back like a, a really like nice Japanese whiskey. And I was like, "All right, I'll, I'll fuck it." So we found some spirits there. Uh, <laughs> there is. Uh, right there. I would like to go back there and do it just because yeah. it's a nice, nice town. I'd like to go there. I'd like to go to the catacombs of Paris. Uh, yeah, probably that island in Italy looks awful. Uh, now, now I'd like to go to like a uh, new opportunity to go to Buckingham Palace and just catch that queen. <laughs> We just knock, and we just we walk, we walk into the watcher office and just tap on the boo goo machine. Your Majesty, <laughs> would you like some tea? <laughs> then also just the noise I imagine her making when I put the oh, net over oh, there. You know, <laughs> Katie, just because you watch the crown, you don't gotta get all. Well, I'm a fan. Obviously, you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Oh, she Get out of the net. Uh, we only have time for a couple more. I'm so sorry. We are running out of time, so just giving the warning uh, that we're going to take a couple more. Uh, but thank you guys so much for your patience, and thank you for hanging in with us. But yeah, what's your name? Hello, so I'm Alex, and I'm Annika's boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Hi, Alex. Alex. We were both wondering if you would ever go to Gettysburg again, because it really means a lot to us. That is where we realized we were going to start dating. <laughs> Did you mean? You gotta meet you at Gettysburg? <laughs> so here's a story. Oh boy. So, the moment I reacted to her actually watching Unsolved was really, let's say, funny. And so I, she approached me with the idea of going to Gettysburg to ghost hunt where you guys went. I see. And so we went as friends and then we. So he now has more than friends. And then we suddenly realize what would come of it. So, yeah, if you, if you could go to Gettysburg again, that would be I'd love to go. When we went to Gettysburg last time, it was at the tail end of a five-shoot trip. We had been on the road for a long time. Shane was exhausted. <laughs> I was exhausted. There's a moment at the end. Actually, you know what, Shane? You can tell this story. Because <laughs> We were so excited to wear those wool uh, <laughs> uniforms. Very authentic uniforms worn by soldiers in the Gettysburg War. Which is funny because we spent one night in it and we were like, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it was like 90 degrees out and it rained and it was so humid. We were wearing wool and I was wearing shoes with metal soles. That's um, not, that's, he's not joking, his shoes had metal inside. Uh, if you watch that episode, it's the most exhausted and miserable I've ever been on a ghost hunt. And at the very end, usually when we exit a place, it's 2 or 3 a.m., we walk away, we get an exit shot that we barely ever use in any episode, <laughs> but Ryan will be like, I have something, huh? I'll be like, no, ghosts are real, okay, <laughs> uh, uh, And uh, we were walking away from Gettysburg, and Ryan was like, well, another one in the books. And I was like, yeah, I... I'm uh, fucking having it for you, man. He, he turned to me, looked me down the eye, and went, I can't do it. <laughs> and, then, and then I come out of the house from picking up. It's lightning and thundering and raining. And I turned to them and I said, Did you guys get it? Oh, yeah. And they go and they look me dead in the eyes and like, Oh, yeah, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Great, okay, let's get out of here. Um, so. Liars. Yeah, I'm sure there's other haunted places there other than the inn. I, mean, I, I'm I, happy I, to go I love back. back to Gettysburg. Yeah, but, uh, doing that tour was crazy. Yeah, maybe. It's possible. Okay. What'd you say? There's a great candy store. There's a great candy store? <laughs> Are you guys in the pocket of Dick Gettysburg? Are you trying to like, drum up more tourism? <laughs> Check out the candy store, it's also a little shop. <laughs> say hello to Jimmy. Thank you, Alex. Okay. <laughs> Um, I was wondering, oh, first, um, this is from the back of the line somewhere, I'm just going to pass along when I'm done. Oh, wow. Um, Thank you. Oh, hello. Um, <laughs> I don't, 
Oh yeah, yeah let's, uh, let's, get a, let's get a pool here, just in... <laughs> oh, sure. Roll right past Didn't actually think it'd get this far, to be honest. Um, mostly. Thoughts on me predicting ghost files a month ahead of you announcing it on Tumblr.com. Oh my god. <laughs> Is that like the cork board, essentially? Of what the string is attached to it? Yes! Okay. I put my heart, blood, sweat, tears into it 24 oh, hours ago. I put some supplies from Michael's. Pass it up to you. Check it out. Well, yeah, pass it up again. Yeah, and we'll give you, we'll give you our thoughts on it. Oh, wait, let's hear this question. Oh, oh no! no! It's okay. We're out. Everyone's fine. <laughs> He almost stopped, dropped, and rolled the link. Okay. <laughs> we'll take a look at this in a minute. We'll get okay. the question. Yep, there you Let's are. Let's see. There you are. POV, you posted this on November 19th, 2021. Ryan, tuck it away. Okay, but how fucking funny would it be if immediately after Pussy on Saw Dance, they announce a new show on Watcher with the exact same premise and execution? <laughs> <laughs> Thousand notes. Now it wasn't immediate. We did give you a week. <laughs> we gave you a week to mourn a very emotional monologue from myself. Uh, that's that's what Ryan. Obviously, I, I was you know it's, the finale of Unsolved is very funny because uh, the whole time I was like, eh, those files are coming. Uh, <laughs> Ryan was understandably un, uh, emotional. It was your baby. It was a beautiful thing. Here's the thing. But we'll get to your question in a second. This but yes. my last yes. note on, on, on Unsolved was because I felt that if we are creators and you guys have been supporting the show for six years and you basically given us everything that we have, how, for us to not repay you by ending that show properly, what would give you any incentive to support us in our next endeavor if you saw us basically just throw away something that you had supported and helped us build for so long? And there was, there was a season or two where it seemed like maybe that was our last season, and Ryan was like, that might be it. And I was like, He's gonna want to finish it, <laughs> and then like really, yeah, to stick the landing. There was something break down on set. There was a brutal moment in one of those uh, pandemic seasons where we were shooting at that weird location, yeah, where we thought it was gonna be our last season, and you got upset, but we were social distancing. And nobody could get near Ryan to comfort him. He just sat there on the log, crying. <laughs> and we were like, you alright over there, buddy? It's very sad. Very sad. I actually think that was the night too, and she was like, if it makes you feel any better, there's ants all over my chicken McNuggets. I didn't think a lot of ants that night. You know? uh, they were still crawling around my face. So I was like, it's alright, right, buddy. Anyways, uh, let's get to this question. Okay. Please. Japanese adage that if there's that someone dies in a fit of rage or in a, a large amount of pain that it kind of leaves like a mark. There is there is a part of me that believes that because it's all I've heard growing up, which is no surprise why I am the way I am now. <laughs> um, but then there's a lot of uh, it's going to sound very ironic or just weird is probably the term to you, Shane. But there's a more scientific way to look at it. Is that uh, hear me out here? I believe that we are all you know essentially energy. And what happens to that energy after you die? It, just, it could just disappear, or maybe there are echoes of it through time. And I think maybe that's what it is. That's why certain things, like certain places that are haunted, they're called residual hauntings. It's not like an intelligent haunting. What I mean by that is residual haunting is more like a carousel. You just see something repeat over and over again, because it's basically just that recycled energy playing out over and over again. And then there are certain places where someone's like, hey, I'm gonna fuck with those two guys. Like, you know, uh, so I don't really know, but I do think it has something to do with just uh, what happens to our soul after we die, which is a really uh, woo-hoo way to, to explain it, but it's what I believe. I think. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what you think makes ghosts from a person who doesn't believe in ghosts. Nothing. Well, people know that I'm deeply uh, religious, and I, 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 think, I think our souls go uh, to uh, sort of like a like a hot dog factory, you know. Where they, <laughs> okay, this is about art. Of they course. sort of like sort them of like that hot dog's good, hot dog good, hot dog good, hot dog bad, hot dog. And I think God does that. <laughs> this would be like you making a hot 
dog for me if you had never had a hot dog in your life? <laughs> Why would I eat that hot dog? It makes no sense I, to have you explain yeah. what you think. I should let you go second because I <laughs> did the joke thing and then uh, I apologize. <laughs> uh, uh, unfinished business. Uh, it's just so much more authentic than being a ghost. I mean, it's not even like that. The thing is, if, if ghosts are real, there's proof that there is something after death. Yes, but I want to... Otherwise, it's just like you disappear into a business. It's very well, scary. Well, but on the, on the converse side of that coin, I, I would like to say that I think the finite nature of life makes our moments here mean all that much more. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's why it's an absolute pleasure to be in this room with all of you tonight. Did anybody have one more? Because we'll get one more question. I'm so sorry. That was it. I know, but I didn't give warning, and I feel terrible. So That's one more it. question. I'm so sorry if we didn't get to you guys. Thank you so much for bearing with us. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Aaron. Um, I also met my girlfriend because of. Uh, oh my god! Uh, it was a mutual love. She's right there. Her name's Katie. Hey, Katie! Uh, Katie, to Katie, thank you. Here's my name. We should start a ghost club. Yes. Schemes. Yes. Schemes. 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 This is actually um, a question that I stole, so I wanted to give her credit anyway. So thank I you, Katie. Good way to tie it in. But um, what exactly is, like, the science behind the obvious? Because it is like, <laughs> hell of a last question. Words. And they seem a little random, and I don't That's entirely right. understand how you take, like, the heat changing in the room, and you're like, that means the moon. Yeah, or, like, right. psychic. Shane, I don't know, I just, yeah, I don't yeah. get it. I don't I love, understand. I love your <laughs> <laughs> First I'm up to the That is, I have a non-disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell us the science. I am going to tell you. It does take environmental readings from, you know, so this temperature. Uh, you, see, you saw the explanation, but basically the idea is, that, this is going to sound ridiculous. <laughs> but the idea is that ghosts are able to manipulate those things, and there are certain settings, like if the temperature is this high and the electromagnetic field reading is down here, that corresponds to a certain word or sound inside the thing, and they're able to use that. That's the science behind it, or the thought behind it. But the thing is, if you're in a place and it, it, it responds intelligently, or if, like, if you say, where am I right now? It's in the bathroom. And then it continues that kind of interaction for a long period of time. That, for me, is a compelling thing. There are possibilities for something to be random, but if it's continued, then that's when it can be fun. Yeah. Or it's just fun to get called a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, I don't know how satisfying that is to you. It's what Shane likes to call pseudoscience. But a lot of people like to call that. Yeah. <laughs> that's also why we like to use more than one tool in, a, in you know, in companion. <laughs> okay, one more. Jesus. Huh. You just look so dissatisfied. <laughs> Hi. Last one. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Jolene, and uh, my question's probably not as good as the one behind me, so I'm just going to say Illinois Rep. Thanks for always. Midwest Rise Up. Midwest Rise Up. Bunch of sheep. Oh, 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 my God. Thank you to this lovely person right here. Thank you, Jolie. Uh, my name is Jane, and I worked at a music store for six years, including uh, selling Honey Tone amps. Oh, and nice. I, I personally own one, and I absolutely need to know more about that process, because I know you have guitar pedals on there. I have not been able to get a clear shot of figuring out what it is, how it works. I need I need more info. I love yes. these last two questions. Like, tell <laughs> us specifically <laughs> how these things work. <laughs> So there's two pedals. There's one on the right. That... That's funny, but then it's true. But there's two pedals. One on the right that actually is just so you could uh, feed the spear box in. So it's just input. Oh, it's just input now. And it just and that just flows into the actual honey tone. <laughs> and then the other pedal is another flow through, and that's just a reverb pedal. It's just a simple reverb. If you actually look, um, I think it's I forget the name, the the brand of it, but it's basically something that just allows it allows you to hear what's happening a little bit clearer because sometimes it's so fast that you need a little bit of a, a delay on it yeah um so it's basically just giving you that delay so it's 
a little bit uh, easier to pick up, especially when you're on site, because it happens so fast. I know it doesn't seem like that in the episode, but when you're there, it's really tough to make out what it says sometimes. So just having that little bit of echo and delay weirdly makes it easier to understand what it's saying. But it's just a simple reverb pillow. Uh, pillow. Pedal. <laughs> awesome. Probably TC Electronics. Uh, very Maybe. cool. I'm Shania. Yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs>